Hi everyone, I'm Heidi Dean, social media expert for actors, and I'm back with Backstage talking about social media. But specifically this time, we're gonna talk about what to post. I'm gonna walk you through the process that I take my clients and my students that really helps them always have content to share on social media. And not just any content, guys, content that clearly shows your actor brand, content that respects your privacy, and content that builds your fan base. So hopefully by the end of this live, you'll be well on your way to posting like a boss for your acting career. So give me a like if that sounds awesome, if you're pumped to be here. And if you're in the chat, let me know where you are viewing from. Hello from Baltimore, Texas. Awesome. New York. I'm in New York, <laughs> hanging in there. But thank you so much for joining me, guys. Patrick, Brenda, Sabina, Kaylee, Selma. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, keep it coming. Let me know where you guys are coming from. Perfect. So while you guys do that, let me tell you what you're going to learn today. Just very specifically, you're going to figure out how to tell your unique story on social media. I'm going to walk you through an exercise that will help you strike a perfect balance between your private and public life so that you never overshare and you never undershare. It's also going to keep you from having to have a public account and a private account because let's face it, guys, it's 2020 and that just does not work anymore. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. We're also going to talk about how to create a brand on social media that really creates a connection with your followers and helps grow your following. And you're going to want to stick around to the end because I'm going to give you guys 30 post ideas that you can use on social media as an actor. So you definitely, definitely want to stick around. Hey, Maddie. Hey, Sylvia. Richie McCall from Brooklyn. I cannot believe you're here. I forgot to text you this link. So thank you for being here. Awesome. Very, very, very cool. So and what's great about these post ideas I'm going to give you guys at the end is you can use them whether you're booking or not. OK, and that's going to all be crystal clear very, very soon. Okay, thank you for joining me from all over the world. This is awesome. So I'm just gonna dive right in, guys. Just know that today is kind of like a masterclass. It's actually a little different than the last two lives I've done. If you have paper, take it out. If you have a pen, take it out. Um, because I'm really gonna, it's like a workshop of how are we setting up a posting plan for you? It's the exact thing I do in my online classes. So I'm very excited about that. And thank you, New York, England, Atlanta, Sh Chicago. Very, very awesome. So step number one to really post like a boss on social media is you need to know how to tell your unique story on social. So to really post like a boss, you've got to create posts that give us a backstage pass, not just into your actor's life, but also into who you really are. You know, within a few seconds of looking at your Instagram or your Twitter, I should know who you are. I should know what you love and I should know what you stand for. You know, your posts, they, they should show me all of this. They should show me your interests, your hobby, your um, point of view, your strengths, and your weaknesses, okay? And the posting mistake I see most actors make, and it's really the mistake that keeps them stuck and keeps them asking every day, what do I post on social media, is that they focus their social media post almost exclusively on their actor's life. So they're not creating posts that help their followers get to know them at all, you know, and get to know what they care about outside of acting. OK, and I can see why. Right. You've been told that you need to be on social media as an actor. Right. So you post about being a hashtag grateful actor. Right. You post when you hashtag booked it. You post about the hashtag actor hustle and you post about what it's like living the hashtag actor's life. And you know what? As long as you're not spoiling anything, that is totally, totally cool to post about those things. But the problem is you are only telling us half your story. And because of that, you are setting yourself up for failure. OK, just to be totally honest, you see, because not even the biggest actors work all the time. So if you only post about your actor's life, then you're actually eventually going to run out of things to post, or you're just going to post nothing but throwback Thursdays and flashback Fridays, which is going to get really old, right? So you guys have to create posts that give us a backstage pass into your actor's life and a backstage pass into who you are. You the mom, you the vegan, you the animal lover, the history buff, even you the hashtag Disney lover, whatever it is, it is different for everyone. OK, but you need to have that magic balance of posting professionally and posting personally. 
okay? And there's really a magic equation for this. So write this down, guys. If you can share your unique voice and life experience, plus your life as an actor, that will equal, uh, it, will, it will create a connection a connection that leads to loyal followers that stick around and tell their friends about you. Okay, so let me say that again. The magic equation for your posting is posting about your unique life experiences plus your life as an actor, and that will equal connections that lead to loyal followers. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to do that balanced equation today. Okay, and I'm I'm really truly excited to walk you through this process because up until this moment right now, I have only shared this with my private clients and in my online classes. So this was not something that you'll find on my YouTube channel, not on my blog. I haven't shared it anywhere. So give me a thumbs up if you're excited for that, and just let me know you're still with me. <laughs> it gets lonely on this side of the camera when I only see chat. Um, but to be totally honest, guys, I really believe that right now, and I mean right now opposed to like five years ago or 10 years ago, it's an amazing time to be an actor because using social media, you are able to create your future one post at a time. It is like you are directing the movie that you want the world to see, right? And you don't actually always have that control in the business. You know, um, yes, you can control how you look and your brand and certain parts of your image when you walk into an audition. But when you walk in there, they're going to decide what they want, right? You're not fully in control. They're going to decide what they see. But your social media is your world. It's your movie. So how do you want the world to see you? Okay? What story do you want to tell? And I just think it's so powerful that social media gives us that power. Okay? Awesome. Awesome. And you guys can hear me and see me. Perfect. Lots of thumbs up and love. So one of my favorite quotes, guys, is from a true boss, Miss Dolly Parton. And it is, find out who you are and do it on purpose. And I don't know if it's backwards for you guys, but it is one of my favorite quotes. Take a screenshot of it. It will change your social media. It is exactly what you're going to learn today, okay? Dolly has made a career of being Dolly on purpose everywhere, in her music, in TV, in film, on social media. And yes, at 74 years old, she is very active on social media, okay? So in order to create this movie of you, we need to figure out who you are so you can do it on purpose everywhere, okay? So with my students, um, in my courses and my clients, I do an exercise called putting the me in your social media. And that's where we're going to start today. It's the first thing I do when we work together. Um, in interest of time, it's usually any questions. Um, I want to answer questions at the end. I want to get you through this whole posting plan process. I'm going to only do eight of the 20 questions from this exercise, but we're really going to do the eight core questions that are going to help us get to who you really are so you can do it on purpose, okay? So take out a piece of paper, guys. Like I said, this is a master class. Take out a piece of paper. I'm gonna ask you a series of questions designed to uncover your strengths, your weaknesses, your talents, your values, your hobbies, um, and all the things that really make you uniquely you, okay? These questions are going to help you figure out how to tell your story on social media. They're also going to help you write your bios, create posts, and find your tribe. Pretty cool, right? So let me know if you're still with me. Give me a little heck yeah, a little woohoo in the chat. Let me know if you are excited. And that gives you time to get a piece of paper and a pen. And don't worry, guys, if the internet gods are with us, the this replay will be on their YouTube channel afterwards. So I'm going to move fast through the questions, and Katie's going to put them in the chat for you guys. But you can go home uh, after this and answer them. Okay? Great. I see woohoo, stoked. Yeah. Awesome. Very, very cool. Okay. Now, when you answer these questions, guys, when you do this exercise, please, please, please do not limit yourself to things that are acting related. Remember what I said, your audience, they want to know about your next booking, your next project, but even more, they want to know how you're just like them. Okay? So take out that piece of paper and tell me, question number one, how do you make people feel? How do you make people feel? Do you make them feel playful, excited? empowered, energized, fabulous, uh, relaxed, happy, confident. Um, those are some possibilities and there's a lot of others. So just trust your instincts, okay? Trust your instincts. And 
your vibe, guys, your vibe attracts your tribe. So if you can figure that out, if you can figure out how you make people feel, it will change your social media. Okay. It really, really, truly will. When I was able to figure that out, it, it changed everything for my engagement, for my follower growth. Okay. So, and if you guys feel compelled to answer any of these questions in chat as we go along, go for it. Just put them in the chat so we can, so we can see them. So question number one, how do you make people feel? Question number two, how would someone describe you? Are you positive? Are you funny? Are you sarcastic? Are you a uh, glass half empty, glass half full? This answer is going to affect the tone of your social media post. Okay. Question number three. Who inspires you and why? And this can be people that you know, or it can be somebody that you've never even met who you look up to. So maybe a famous actor, an influencer, a coach, a mentor, family member, you know, you get the idea. So write a few people down. Who inspires you and why? Okay, like a golden retriever. I love it. Tickle, joyful. These are great. Awesome, awesome. Okay. So question number one, how do you make people feel? Question number two, how would someone describe you? Question number three, who inspires you and why? Question number four, what significant events have shaped who you become? Okay. So this could be a childhood experience. It could be an achievement, a milestone, um, maybe finding love, maybe becoming a mom. I know that's changed me. I have a five-year-old who Rich McCall knows. <laughs> or maybe it, maybe it wasn't such a positive thing when it happened. Maybe you were diagnosed with an illness or you lost somebody, you know? So is there something, is there a significant event that shaped who you become? Okay. And write it down in your paper, no judgment. And I'll tell you why in just a second. Okay. All right. Question number five, do you have any unique qualities or talents besides acting? This could be a special skill on your resume. It could be a cool party trick. It could be the fact you speak five languages. Um, I have a, a client who is an amazing martial artist and he's actually creating great stuff for social media by highlighting those talents in short video clips. And he's actually booked more work because of it. So if you have any unique qualities or talents outside of acting, write them down. Okay. If you do, you're going to have lots to post on social media. Okay. All right. Question number six, guys. Like I said, I'm just going to move through these and you can answer them later on. Question number six, what values are most important to you? So really what gives your life meaning? Friendship, family, faith. Um, you know, there, there's a million values that could be important to you. Family, service to others. What values are most important to you? Okay. Number seven, question number seven, I love. And actually, I'm just going to say, if you guys are, I just saw we got a bunch of people joining. I'm walking you through a three-step process to how to figure out how to tell your story on social media. Okay. We're going to figure out who you are so you can do it on purpose. So we're walking through step one right now. If you're coming in late, don't worry about it. The replay will be up afterwards. So question number seven, which I love, is if you were first lady, what would your cause be? Or guys, if you were the first, first man, <laughs> what would your cause be? What would you rally behind? Um, you know, would it be childhood obesity? Would it be um, mental health awareness? Help with um, arts in the schools? Uh, human rights, animal rights, <laughs> anti-bullying, uh, suicide prevention, mental health. I think I already said that. But, um, you know, this could be something that you are ready are, you know, rally behind. This might tie into a significant event that shaped who you became, or become, question four. And this might be something you already volunteer for, okay? So write it down. If you were first lady or first man, what would your cause be? I love body positivity, perfect, perfect. Um, to be the greatest first husband in the house, LOL. Yes, look, you can tell, <laughs> just imagine for a second, you have that power. <laughs> I love it. Okay. And question number eight, like I said, we're doing eight of the 20 questions today, really the core questions to get at who you are so you can tell it on purpose and post about it on purpose. Number eight, what do you do when you're not acting? What are your hobbies? What are your interests? And a lot of times with clients, my clients are mostly artists. So I, I get a lot, well, I love to watch movies or TV. That's cool. But if that's your answer, get specific. 
what kind of TV shows, what kind of films, what, what is there a certain genre of film you love? And if it can tie into the type of acting you work, you want to book, that's a perfect combination. I'm going to show you an example of that in a second. All right, cool. So guys, that is step one. Is this putting the me in your social media exercise? Um, Really what it is, is it's a brainstorm. So we're brainstorming what makes you awesome and uniquely you. Um, and now we have something to kind of draw from to create that movie of you online and to tell your story. But like any good movie, not every scene makes the final cut. And I know as actors, you guys realize that far, you know, <laughs> way too well, right? Not every scene that is shot in that movie is going to make the final cut. You know, you only keep the ones that serve the story you're telling. Likewise, everything that you just wrote down on your list will not become part of your public persona. And that is what we're going to talk about next. Okay. So step two, the posting like a boss is what I call choosing your nanyas. And yes, totally made up word. And I'm going to explain what it is in a second. But just for a second, I want you to think about the last time you watched the late night TV show. Now there is a 100% chance that that actor or artist or probably their PR team told the interviewer what topics were off limits. They did this in advance. So they would not have to reply, none your business during the interview. The topics, the interest, the parts of your life that are private, you know, are your nunyas, N-U-N-Y-A-S. Okay. These are the nunyas that you've decided you will not post about on social media at least for right now. Remember, not everything that makes you you um, and unique will be part of this public persona. And that's very important. You know, you probably, as an example, you might want to exclude some things that are important to you that you don't want the whole world to know. Okay. So maybe you decide that talking about your kids is fine on social, but posting pictures of them isn't. Or Maybe your side job as an acting coach can be part of your Twitter page because it strengthens your story as an actor. But those two shifts as a waiter aren't really a part of that, you know, hashtag working actor story you're telling, right? Um, not on social. Or um, maybe you decide that who you love, who you vote for, or where you worship is off limits because, frankly, it's none your business. Okay, but what's important is that you set these social limits ahead of time. It is essential for your social media. Also, it's just powerful once you set these social limits, you are going to, you're, it, it, it's, you're really creating your public world. And then you don't feel like you're sharing private information because you've already decided what's public and private. Now, let me just do two quick examples here for you guys. Um, two social bosses, um, two moms but their nanyas are totally different. Carrie Washington, Busy Phillips. So Busy Phillips posts about her kids, posts about her family all the time. She's kind of like an open book um, for it and has grown a huge audience of women, moms behind, you know, rallying behind her social media and her story. Carrie Washington, her nanyas are her husband and her kids. She still has built a huge audience that loves her and even relates to her as a mom, even though we're not seeing her kids. OK, um, so it's really the nanyas are different for everybody. And that's important for you guys to know it's different for everybody. And you're going to want to return to your nanyas over time because they're going to change. Even right now, I bet there are a lot of actors on social media that maybe said their family's off limits. But with everything happening in the world, when we're all stuck at home, guess what? That nanya might change. You might bring people in to see your family a little bit more on social media right now. So know that your nanyas will change, especially if you have something major happen in your life, you know, positive or negative. All right. Cool. I see lots of things in the chat. And just let me know, guys, give me a like, um, you know, a thumbs up in the chat that you are following me here about your nanyas. We really are setting your social limits. Okay. Let me know in the chat. So your next step, guys, is going to be looking at the questions, those eight questions you just wrote down. Once you answer them, I want you to look at your answers and I want you to cross off anything that might be a nanya for you right now, okay? Just cross it off, but be careful. When you do this, do not make all your struggles nanyas because social media is a really great place to laugh about your weaknesses and your mistakes. It makes you human, it makes you relatable and it really shows us who you truly are. So don't make the perfect version of yourself when you're crossing out your nanyas, okay? Because that is not cool. 
Hey, Millie Ortiz. Millie Ortiz, you're one of my rock stars. So you've done the putting the me in your social media. And I'm sure you know that even today, as I walk you through it, you may have different answers because that was a couple of years ago, right? Okay, awesome. So one last thing with the Nunyas that's super important as an actor. If the things you post about online are in direct conflict with the type of roles you play, okay, um, it could actually keep you from getting cast. Okay. Um, you guys are getting Googled more often than you realize, especially right now. <laughs> so let me give you an example here. You want to make sure that what you walk into in the audition room and what you're putting out in social media is the same. So the a perfect example is say you look younger than you really are. You know, um, I was an actress for 20 years. I haven't been acting for 10 years now because I'm teach social media. But when I was an actress, I was always playing 10 years younger than I was. I'm 40 right now. And I don't, I don't think I look 40. Um, <laughs> I look a little tired right now, but I don't look 40. So if I was going in for high school age roles, you know, years ago, but maybe in my early twenties, I was a young mom. Well, posting about my life as a mom, my mom's life on social media, when I'm going in, when my castability sweet spot is playing high schoolers, they're not aligning, right? So maybe the mom stuff, maybe being a mom becomes a nunya until I grow into mom roles in a few years, right? So in this case, really having a clear understanding of your castability informs how you might consider representing yourself online, okay? especially if you're using social media for networking, which you should, right? <laughs> that's kind of the biggest reason to use it. Um, so let me know if that's clear, guys, okay? You don't look 40 at all. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> but yes, it's a perfect example of like, if you play younger roles, then make sure the story you're telling online matches up with that, okay? It's really, really, really important, okay? Um, and it might just mean you don't share that part of you right now and you find other things to share. So step number one, answering the questions. Step number two, excluding your nanyas. Step number three, we want to look at all your answers that are left, you know, after you cross off your nanyas, and we wanna turn the passions that are left on the page into post ideas, okay? That is step number three. Um, and let me show you how I do this. Um, what I do is, here, I'm, let, me, I'm, let me go back a little bit. So everything that's left on this page, I just wanna make sure it's super clear. You answer the eight questions, you cross off your nanyas, what's left, that can become part of your social media. So I just wanna make sure that's very, very clear. Then you can post about it with purpose. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all the things that are left and we're gonna turn them into post ideas or post categories that kind of show us who you are, okay? What I like to do, I like to draw a box of four, just like that, right? So I like to draw a box of four. This is called your fab four. The fab four are those four things that make you fabulous, that make you you, that are gonna be part of your online brand that we're gonna start recognizing over and over again, okay? They're the things we're gonna start to know, like, and trust about you online. Okay, so let's think about some of the questions I asked earlier. So maybe because you said family values are important to you and maybe hanging with your baby girl is when you feel most alive, then your life as a mom becomes a part you can post about, right? Or maybe doing yoga or meditation is when you feel most alive, right? And fitness totally ties into staying healthy as an actor, so it fits into that. So maybe we'll just put yoga. So that becomes something as well. Maybe you do charity work right? Maybe, remember, go back to that first lady question. What is important to you? Um, maybe it's mental health awareness. Maybe, I'll get really specific, maybe you're volunteering for the Actors Fund. Maybe you do a lot of charity work for the Actors Fund. Shout out to the Actors Fund, helping a lot of actors right now. Um, so maybe you post about when you volunteer with them. Maybe it's a weekly thing you do, right? Not in person right now, obviously. <laughs> um, and that's also helping spreading the word about something that's important to you. And it actually ties right back into your acting career, right? And then number four, of course, you're an actor. So that becomes something you can post about. Now, keep in mind, there's four things. You don't have to post about them evenly. When you book more, you're going to lean into this, obviously. When you're not booking, look at all the stuff you have to post about, right? We found out who you are, and now we're posting about it 
on purpose, okay? Just like Dolly would say. All right. Um, also, like, let's think about if you answered the question about how you make people feel. If you make people feel confident, right, or motivated, then instead of just finding random quotes, which I see a lot of you guys doing, you're just like slapping up spaghetti posting quotes all the time on social media. Make sure they align with how you want to make us feel, right? If you want to make us laugh, make those quotes funny or make them from um, comedians you look up to. Um, or if you want to motivate us, make sure those quotes motivate us. Post with a purpose. Don't just slap up a quote because you heard you're going to get engagement on it. It's why some of you aren't getting engagement on it because it's not showing us who you truly are. Or remember question number three was who inspires you and why? So maybe if you are going to post quotes at some point, Point, and maybe quotes is one of these things. Maybe you post quotes from your heroes. So now we have insight to the type of people um, and the exact people who have inspired your life, right? We're getting specific, okay? Um, so that is your fab four. Let me give you a couple um, uh, other things. Somebody just said, so one of the four things should be acting. Yes, yeah, well, if you're using the social media as an actor, yes. If you're a content creator and you're sharing the account with your content, you might have actor and content creator right? Um, that's a whole another thing I can talk about is how to how to navigate whether you should share your uh, social media pages with your content, where and when and what platforms that's appropriate. Uh, and we can talk about that. Okay. Um, perfect, Maria. I see I'm a musician and passionate for accurate disability um, representation and advocacy, advo advocacy. Excuse me. That's perfect, right? Um, so let's um, do a couple more examples. But you can see right here, now you've got tons of post ideas that you can draw throughout the week, throughout the month that clearly show who the show the world who you are because we're getting specific, we're posting with purpose, okay? Let me give you a couple other examples um, just to really hit home with this so you guys totally understand it. Um, I talked about that client of mine who is an actor but does a lot of martial arts and he's using that. Let's talk about his fab four. Um, okay, so he's an actor, obviously. Actor, martial arts. And I don't even know. This stuff might be backwards for you guys, but you'll figure it out. Actor, martial arts. Um, he's also loves Marvel films. Like absolutely loves, loves, loves them. And this is what I said. One of your things, one of your interests or hobbies could be the type of type of um, shows you watch. He loves Marvel films. Pretty much anything superhero too. He'd also love to be in Marvel films. So this is a great example because really the martial arts and the love of Marvel films and actor are all acting. They're all tying into his brand as an actor without us even having to hit home of like, I book this, I'm doing this. It's just like subliminal of the type of he wants to book. So if you can make your Fab Four really reflect the type of roles, the type of work you want to do even better, okay? And then he has like the most adorable adorable pit bull. That sounds funny, but he does. And his dog is his fourth category. And he cycles through these. When he's booking more, he leans more into actor. But he never worries about what to post because everything he's pulling from are things he does every day, things that make him him. And he has no problem growing his following because it's very easy to go out and find people who would like this account. What so many of you guys are doing is you're spaghetti posting. So it's just like random things from your day, but I don't really know who you are, what you what you stand for. And then you show up in my feed and I unfollow you because I, frankly, I'm kind of like, did I follow this person? But if I have a clear idea of who you are, I'm going to recognize you every time. One more example, and then we're going to move on. Okay. Um, one more, one more example here. It's a little tiny one because I'm running out of space. Um, client of mine is an actor, stand up comedian. Okay. Actor, stand up comedian. He's also a dad. But he doesn't just post about being a dad. He posts about it in the whole lens of how he wants to make us feel. So we, it's kind of Jim Gaffigan style of, um, you know, telling us the funny things that he does uh, that his kids do all the time, right? So it's from that lens. But he is an actor and a stand-up comedian when he does, um, all his acting is, is comedy. So the whole lens of his account is to try to make us laugh. You got it? Does that make sense, guys? Let me know if that makes sense. So this is your fab four. Well, like I said, you're going to put the me in your social media. Okay. And um, you're going to put the me in your social media. You're going to exclude your nunyas. And with what's left, you're going to figure out your fab four. Now, I'm surprised nobody noticed. This guy only has a fab three. 
And guess what? If you can find three things instead of four, you can go with the fab three too. Just don't go with more than fab four. Okay? Because that's too much. Um, I see this great question. Kid teen actors make a YouTube channel. Oh, I thought it was, should they do the fab four? Um, I'll answer the YouTube channel one later on. But with kids and uh, teen actors, really lean into how they make you feel. Do they educate a little bit more? Do they entertain? Like, um, are they more of the inspiring type? Lead into their vibe a little bit more than anything because, of course, their Fab Four is going to change every five minutes. I know. I have a five-year-old, so. All right. So let me know that that makes sense, guys. Let me know. So that is your homework, guys. That is your homework. You need to answer those questions, which, like I said, the replay will be back up when we're done. Um, then you need to exclude your nanyas, the things you are not comfortable with posting right now. And then with what's left, you're going to turn those passions into post ideas and figure out your fab four. Okay. Um, so you can post about it on purpose. And when you master this fab four guys, you are going to perfectly balance that equation that I talked about in the beginning. Remember your life experiences and point of view as an actor or your life experiences um, and point of view plus your life as an actor equals connections that lead to loyal followers. So you can see the fab four does that. It lets us in about a little bit more about who you are. Somebody that does this amazing is Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. He does not just post about his actor's life. And frankly, if anybody could, it would be him because <laughs> he is booking all the time um, and he produces. So he has, he would, he could just get away with doing that, but he knows that's not smart. He knows that his fab four of sharing his family, his adorable daughters, you know, sharing with us his fitness journey ties right into his actor brand, just like my martial artist client, right? Um, even sharing on Sunday, sometimes like how much sushi that man can eat, right? Or how much, um, how big that sub sandwich is that he can eat. It ties right back into his brand and he's letting us into who he is. And he does a lot of his his um, social media from the, how does he want to make us feel? He wants to pump us up. He wants to motivate us, right? So it's the same thing I'm teaching. So awesome. Thank you for this. This is great information. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. I'm giving you guys stuff, like I said, I've never publicly given outside of my clients and um, students. Um, so she said, sorry, what do you mention? This goes in the bio from this. Oh, well, that's the next step, guys, is you can take this. And of course, it's going to be in your bio because your bio is a preview for what to expect from your post. So make sure it's in your bio. Make sure it's in your highlights on um, on Instagram. It's going to become your post, the Fab Four, right? Um, it is the, the basis for everything. It's going to help you find your hashtags. It's going to help you find your tribe on social media because you know what you're posting about consistently, right? Um, does the questions in the Fab Four apply just to actors or to a fashion store that also posts pictures having a theme or someone that has a podcast? It could be someone that has a, a podcast. Businesses, it, uh, businesses are a whole different thing. Um, I'm a business too. So it's, I let people in. Um, part of my Fab Four is my daughter. Uh, you will occasionally see me post something about my daughter, but it's in the way to motivate, right? Um, so you have to be careful with an actual physical location, um, you know, what you're letting out personally. Um, but it's really more for um, actors, artists, anybody with a personal brand, you can use some of these questions. You know, some of these are tailored a little bit more to artists about talents, but yeah, for the most part, yep. Um, okay. All right, so let me just keep going. Um, I'm almost done and then I'll get to questions, okay? So, um, but I'm glad this makes sense, guys. This is one of those things that you must do the work. Okay, you have to have to have to do this work. What I see a lot of actors doing, and this is one reason I didn't give you guys your post ideas in the beginning. They see a list of post ideas and they're like, yes, that's going to solve all my posting problems. Well, guess what? It's not because those are just random post ideas. If you don't post about them through the lens of your fab four, then we don't we don't have a clear idea of what your brand is. OK, so I promised you guys in the beginning that I'm giving you guys 30 days of post ideas. I was actually going to just like walk through them with you and like read them to you, but I'm looking at the time and I'd rather spend the next 20 minutes answering questions. So what I'll do instead is the link. I think we put the link in the description underneath um, this video. You guys will find it there. Um, or you can go to marketingforactors.com. That's the number four. That's my site. 
where you find over like a hundred resources, um, totally free for social media for actors, but go to marketingforactors.com slash 30 post. And that's the number 30 and post all one word, um, or the links below. I said, go there when we're done. And then you will actually have 30 post ideas in here that you can use um, on social media. Um, and what's great about these post ideas you're going to notice is that they follow that equation. It's a nice balance of posts that give us some insight into who you are um, and um, posts that are about your actor's life. So you're going to see the posts are a nice balance, but always just filter them through your Fab Four, okay, once you figure out what that is. All right. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Backstage, for putting it there. Yeah, I'd rather answer questions and not just go through them. So that's perfect. Um, oh, it's broken. Let's see. If it's broken, I'll get it to you guys. Let's see. Let's see. I'll just keep well, we'll just keep talking and then we'll figure it, figure it out. The one in the description should not be broken. It's marketingforactors.com slash 30 post. So um all right, so I'm gonna answer some questions. Um, let me give one second to Katie here. So type in questions. I really want to really focus on, um, I wanna focus on posting questions. I've been here twice for Backstage in this past month and we covered a million different things. We talked about cleaning up your social media. We talked about growing your Instagram and you guys can go look at those. Um, so make sure that you go and check those out. I am not sure what's going on, but I'll get them to you guys somehow, okay? We'll make sure the backstage gets them to you. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's find some questions here. Okay. How do you choose just four if you find yourself having too many fabs? Would that be better for highlights? Yes, but also, see, a lot of times you think you have all these categories, but they're actually, you don't. Um, you don't have all these categories. You can actually group them together. Um, and like, you might think, okay, talking about my husband, you know, my relationship and my kids are two different, but they're actually family, family values, right? So you should be able to actually put them together. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, so let me know if that makes sense. Uh, let's see. If you also have another career and you don't want the group to know about your acting, can you have two Instagram accounts? Yeah, I mean, if they're totally unrelated, you should have two Instagram accounts. Um, when deciding whether or not, um, and I know, I think I just gave her the wrong link. So let me, I'm gonna find it in a second, guys. So we'll get it to you, don't worry. Um, let's just focus on the question. So um, if you are trying to decide whether or not to have one account or two accounts, um, you have to have the same audience. So, you know, posting like a, a this totally unrelated topic, but um, if a yoga teacher, also wanted to sell essential oils on their Instagram page. Those are the same audience, right? It's under wellness. But if you're an actor and then you also want to start selling essential oils on your Instagram, it's not necessarily the same audience and it actually could hurt your career. You know, if you are, um, if your career's a little further ahead, it might not. Okay. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, just know that they have to have the same audience. And I actually have a, I have a, um, I have on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Heidi Dean, or just look up Heidi Dean, because apparently I'm very bad at links right now. Um, and um, so look up a video that is, should I have one account or two? Okay. And let me know. Um, that will answer your question. Okay. I think I found the, the link. So let me give it to Katie right now, because it's working for me. Can you just, uh, Try it again, Katie. It may be just be the one that's in the description is is wrong. Okay, just let me know over text because um, I want to make sure everyone gets them. Okay, Ooh, we're moving so fast. Um, if you're trying to rebrand yourself, should you go through and delete all of your old posts? Wow, we're moving fast. If they are no longer relevant and don't fit your fab form. If they are totally different, then maybe yes. But I would say look forward. People are only going to scroll through your post for so long, guys. Um, if they are off brand, meaning like they could get you in trouble, then yes, delete them. Okay. And there's a video on my channel too called Clean Up Your Social Media. And it will show you how to do this, how to go through your accounts, how to figure out like, ooh, this, maybe I shouldn't post this. This might hurt my career. And I show you how to do that. Um, whenever you post anything, we ever, whenever you hit post or tweet, you need to ask yourself, number one, does this, um, 
you know, does this pass the mom test? <laughs> right. So would I be cool if my mom, the producer of the dream show that I want to be on, if a casting director, or if an agent saw this post and if it's even like, maybe don't post it. Also, you need to ask, does this, um, you know, does this adhere to my contract or NDA? So if you're posting about, uh, your career, make sure that it is, it is on it. Okay. Um, so, okay, cool. Let's see. Is there somewhere we can find all 20 questions? No, and that's something I do with my private clients and in my student and in my class, because I have to walk you through what the questions mean. So, um, so there is, um, you can contact me on my site, Marketing for Actors. I do that with my clients and, and my students. Okay. Um, what should a teen actor post? Maddie, go right through this exercise. Find out who you are and do it on purpose. That's what a teen actor should post. But also doing it through the lens of what's appropriate and running that mom test, okay? Really making sure that um, that that um, that you're not going to hurt your career, okay? Because people are looking you up. All right. How often should you post? Great question. Um, that's going to be, that is dependent on a lot of things. How often you should post depends on how many followers you have, what platform we're talking about. So if you can be a little bit more specific, I think your name is Elise, but it's gone into the chat stratosphere right now. Um, so let, you know, let me know. I think it was Elise. What platform are you talking about? How often should you post? Because it depends on all those things. Also, how good is your engagement? I talked about this last week when I did uh, Instagram for actors tips. A lot of you guys are posting every day because you read somewhere that to stay relevant, you have to post every day on Instagram. I'm like, but if your post showing us who you are, if you don't have a plan, which you do now, but if you didn't have a plan for your posting and you're just spaghetti posting and you're not getting good engagement, then why are you posting every day? You're not posting with a purpose. You're actually turning your followers away. So I suggest, especially on platforms like Instagram, like guys, just get it together, get your posting plan in place, start slow on the feed, post one or two times a week, figure out what your followers are responding to, figure out what hashtags are working. And I show you how to do that in the last live I did for backstage, figure that out first and then post more. You can always post on stories. You can always go live. There are other places on Instagram that you can be posting. You don't have to post on the feed every day. Okay. In fact, it's better because if you're posting on stories, if you're posting all different places, um, you're going to hit different people. Okay. Somebody just asked, what is my Instagram? It's a uh, marketing for actors. And that's the number four and Twitter and marketing for actor because we only get 15 characters, but I'd love to connect there. Okay, guys. All right. Oh, I think. Okay, cool. All right. Oh, sorry. I just got distracted by a comment there. All right. Should actors have a YouTube channel? Sharon Domenico, great question. Um, it is technically still posting, I guess, right? Um, should, should actors have a YouTube channel? Most actors probably should have a YouTube channel as a housing, a place to house all their content, right? That is why they should have a YouTube channel. Are all actors content creators? Nope, they're not. Back when I was an actor, I was probably not somebody that would have been creating content. Now that may change now, I am a content creator now. Um, but not all actors are content creators. And it's a really big thing you hear right now, especially with what's going on in the world. It's like, go out, create content. That may not be what you're gonna do on YouTube, but should all actors have a place to house their reel, to house their, um, you know, their showcase videos, if they're a musical theater performer, to, um, to house anything like interviews? Yeah, yeah, definitely should have a YouTube channel for that. And you should make sure it's optimized. Uh, you can watch the live I did for Backstage, uh, clean up your social media. And I talk about some of those elements are in YouTube too, like your header, uh, your about section. You need to make sure those are optimized. So when people do find you on YouTube um, or people are looking you up, that you're making the best first impression you can make. All right. If you are, oh, I just moved. If you are just beginning with social media, where do you begin? You're talking a lot about just Instagram. Actually, all of what we're talking about today is not just Instagram. Um, uh, it applies to if you're just beginning, where do you begin? Well, first of all, you figure out what platforms you should be on. Okay. You need to figure out, and this was in the live that I, that clean up your social media. You need to ask yourself, what platform should I be on? And what are my goals for my social media? Because if the platforms that you're on aren't going to help you reach your goals, then you're wasting your time. And the problem is a lot of us sign up for a platform because that's where our friends were. 
or maybe we signed up for a, a, a long time ago, right? Um, in high school or college, and that's why we're there, but we're not really using it for our career. So really, Joanna, think about like, why are you, you know, why would you be on Twitter? Why would you be on Instagram? Why would you be on YouTube? So, you know, are you there to meet new people? Are you there to stay top of mind with the people you already know in the business? Because guess what? There are better places to do those things. If you're just relying on your Facebook page or a Facebook profile, meeting new people, it's not really the best place to do it. You're going to want to be on a platform like Twitter or Instagram. Those are interest-based networks where it's totally cool to follow people, places, and things that who we don't know and interact with them. Facebook profiles, not so much. So Joanna, it goes back to your goals. So if you're just beginning with social media, where do you begin? Figure out your platform and then set up a strategy. Okay. Um, and I do have an ebook that the link should work. <laughs> if you go to ebookforactors.com and it's actually a, a, a checklist that uh, 30 page checklist that will walk you through how to start when you're just starting on social media. Okay. Uh, I want to say I want a clock just like the one on your wall. I know I love my clock. <laughs> I have an all Instagram one too. It's pretty cool. Um, okay. It's moving so fast. Uh, so it says, do you apply the fab four to the highlights? Yeah. And highlights, you can even, you know, add a couple other things too. You can get more specific. Um, I'm actually one of my new YouTube videos coming up on my YouTube channel, um, Heidi Dean. You can just look up Heidi Dean on YouTube. Will be about story highlights because we can do so much with our story highlights on Instagram. We can use them and put the fab four. So it's a really clear idea of what our brand is, but we can also use it as a menu. So like I have, I don't know, 35,000 followers on Instagram. So I have the swipe up feature. So for my highlights, I can use it to send people to my Twitter. I can use it to send people to my YouTube channel. I can use it to be send people to different things. So you can use it kind of as a mini menu, or you can use it as a way to highlight the different parts of you. Okay? So um, let me know if that makes sense. Okay? Let me know. Cool, cool. Someone just said the link is working. Awesome. Cool. I have an awesome assistant that I just texted and they fixed it. <laughs> I think it was uh, private. It wasn't public. So, okay. Someone says, looks like you missed the show. Well, the replay will be back up and Gary, and then you can figure out all of this. This was a, it was a mini masterclass on posting and you kind of have to do it, all the steps, but stick around. I'm answering questions. Um, let's see. Many, what platform is the best for actors? It's what I just answered. The platforms that are going to help you reach your goals. Okay. Um, and the platforms that you enjoy. You know, after you learn the 101, after you give a platform a couple months, do you enjoy this platform, right? And also you need to ask yourself if you're on a show or in a show, what sh what uh, platforms are, uh, is the show using? You know, if your show is live tweeting and you're not on Twitter, that is a big missed opportunity to grow your following and to build your brand. It's, it's a huge missed opportunity. So you better get your butt on Twitter, right? <laughs> um, if your show that you're in or on is doing takeovers on Instagram, well, then guess what? That's a good place for you. What is the audience of that show? And that's where you should play, okay? So, all right. All right, let's see. Let's see. Do you have any photo editing suggestions, presets, or more casual? And how do you think it makes your brand look? I don't, I mean, you can use presets if you want guys presets are like preset filters for Instagram um I say you know there are different ways that you can make a back talking about Instagram there's different ways you can make your feed have a visual voice on Instagram um you can use consistent filters consistent borders consistent fonts if you're adding uh, fonts you can use the fab four it can be a consistent topic that you're talking about all the time, right? So there's all different ways we can do this. And filters are one way we can do that. Do you necessarily need presets? They're great, but most actors probably don't. You can, I would look at your filters and decide which ones match up with the, your answer to question number one. How do you make people feel? When I use filters on Instagram, they are, they have a lot more color. They have a lot more energy. That is my brand. I like to motivate and inspire actors. That's just how I want to make people feel. It is just me. Good vibes. So I make sure my filters show that the colors in my pictures show that so that I really pop off the page. Okay. So yes, that that's just part of your visual voice. If you can actually add that as an extra level a layer on top of your fab four, people are going to, when they go to your page, they're going to feel like they know you. They're going to feel the energy. They're going to read it. It's going to come out of the captions. Um, they're going to know your story from your Fab Four. That's just the filters. It's just an added bonus. So yeah. Okay. 
let's see, who should you follow? Oh, that's a whole can of worms. Who you should follow? You should follow people who are going to want to follow your story, right? And not necessarily follow, I would say um, engage with, because we're, normally people are, when a lot of people are following people to get followers, right? There are other ways to do this. And actually, I'm not going to dive into it because you can just watch the live from last week on Instagram tips for actors. And that was on backstage where I dive into this. But really, when you're, you're going out and trying to find your tribe, it's going to be three, you know, you're going to ask three questions. Um, you know, are, you know, who are the fans of the shows you're on? If you're on a show, um, but also who do, you know, who does what you do? So you might grow a tribe with other actors or other people in the industry, but also who, who loves what you love? The Fab Four. Those are people you can build your tribe with. And those are people that are going to stick around and look forward to your post. You don't just have to grow your tribe with other actors. I see a, that a lot in Facebook groups and everything. Um, but in reality, once your career grows, guys, most of your followers will not be actors. Not if you're on a show. They won't be actors. 99% <laughs> of them won't. So um, so really think about who is going to like what you're posting about. Who is that audience? Okay. That's the Reader's Digest version. Um, okay. This was helpful. Thank you so much. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for joining. Um, Patrick has a great question. What about posting reels from your YouTube to IGTV? Um, I do sh share cover clips on, IG uh, on Instagram. Um, yes. Yeah, definitely. If you guys don't know what IGTV is, it's been out for about a year now. Um, it's Instagram TV. So before we could only post 60 seconds to the feed um, and 15 seconds to stories. And so there was like a big gap on Instagram for posting longer content without having to split it up into um, separate posts or, you know, uh, one minute in increments. So um, so they have IGTV, longer form video. Uh, you can post your reel. You can post uh, a web series. You can post longer form content there. And it is actually a great place to put your reel. And one reason it is um, either your reel or a video of you that sends people to your reel, because depending on where you're housing it, you might want people to go to your website. If you do not have the swipe up feature because you don't on Instagram and you because you don't have um, 10,000 followers or you're not verified, you can put a link in your Instagram TV in your IGTV caption. OK, and that will send people somewhere. So it's kind of a way around the swipe up uh, feature. Um, so whether that is actually your your reel and you're sending them to your website or maybe it's a teaser for your reel that you put on IGTV that then sends them to watch the rest on your site. OK, but yeah, definitely. I have a lot of clients right now that are content creators that are actually creating content for um, for IGTV instead of YouTube. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Are there common interests that are more popular than others for Fab Four? Gardening and plants are one of my interests. You, your plant on the shelf looks healthier than mine. Oh, this one is healthier. These ones are fake. So don't don't compare. Don't compare and despair with my fake plants. <laughs> I just let you into my set magic here. That is re not real. Um, well, really, your Fab Four, Edward, have to be have to come from you, right? Um, they have to tell your story. So um, it's not that that is something more popular than others. As long as it's telling your story um, and helping tell the movie of you, then lean into it, right? And you're gonna see, guys, once you. Whenever you make a pivot in your account, which right now, if you decide on a Fab Four and it's different than what you were doing before, you may lose some followers, but that's okay because if they're not interested in what you're really interested in, then, you know, bye bye, Felicia, goodbye, you know, get people who are, go out and find people that are interested in those things and have, you know, and, and bring them back to your account, have them join your tribe. Okay. Your audience is out there, guys, on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. You just have to know how to find them. Okay. Melinda, wonderful information and energy. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you guys for being here. Um, awesome. Let's see. Is it a good idea to post photos pa of past work if you haven't been on set for a while? Shots of you creating your own content? Yeah. Yeah. Great question, Vanessa. A lot of people think that posting about your actor's life just means like, I booked this or I'm on set. Um, it could be a throwback. It could, but it could just be about you being an actor. And that means so much more than being on set and booking, right? Actually, more of your life as an actor is spent auditioning in class, doing other things as an actor, right? So don't be afraid to lean into that. It doesn't always just have to be about booking, right? Some of the actor accounts that I love, like 
they're taking us on a lot of their different journeys and it's not, it's sometimes they're going to see a friend's show, fellow actor. Sometimes they're, um, they're going to act in class. Sometimes, you know, they're doing different things. They're reading an awesome new book on acting, right? Or they're creating content. So it doesn't always have to be your bookings, okay? Should Sharon's asking, should actors have public accounts or private accounts? Well, if you're using it for your career and you actually want to grow an audience, it has to be public. Nobody follows a private account when you don't know them. You know, it just, it's almost, it's next to impossible to grow a private account unless you're like a celebrity, you know? <laughs> and if they have a private account, they don't want to grow an audience on that one, right? So you need a public account. And this is why I said, going through, figuring out who you are by answering those questions and then excluding those nunyas, those things that you are not comfortable with, guys, okay? Um, that's gonna help you figure out how you're gonna tell your story without giving too much away, okay? Because you're in charge with how you wanna tell that story, okay? Um, okay, let's see. What, what are some accounts you love that we can look for for inspiration? I, I actually wrote an article on it for Backstage um, and I'm sure she'll link to it. Um, so um, I wrote 10 actors to follow on social media and it actually would be fantastic for you guys to watch it because I really um, watch it to read it on Backstage, but I do have a similar video on my YouTube channel. Um, but it'll be fantastic for you guys to look at after learning about the Fab Four because I picked these 10 actors because they are really great at posting, okay? So, um, so it's a, it'll be a great, a great list for you to look at, 10 actors to follow on social media. And I tell you why. I don't just say go follow this person and this person. I say they do a really great job of, um, of bringing their voice to life on, you know, on Twitter, Anna Kendrick, right? So go, so go look at that. I'm sure she's, there you go. There's the article. So that will be very, very helpful for you. Sharon, what should your profile picture be? I actually covered that in the first live <laughs> about cleaning up your social media. If you are an actor, your profile picture needs to be a professional photo. It may be your headshot. Um, or it may be the picture you have on your website. It needs to be a picture that shows us how we would cast you. That's why a headshot is usually the you know, one to go with. Um, but does it have to be the exact headshot you use? No, maybe it's from the same session, but you're actually smiling in this one, right? Um, what's really important is that it is consistent everywhere, okay? Um, I, like, eat, read, live on social media. This is what I do. I don't have a side job. I teach social media to actors. And I'm on social media all the time. And I can't tell you how many times I'm talking to the same actor on Twitter that I'm talking to on Instagram. And I don't know it's the same person, even if they have the same name, because their picture is different. Right? I just, it takes seven to 12 times to recognize a brand online and you are a brand. So make it easy for me to know it's you. So whatever photo you choose, whether it's a headshot, a red carpet shot, cropped, you know, close, um, a, a professional photo for your career, make sure it's the same. On Twitter, it's the same on Instagram, it's the same on your Facebook page. Okay, um, great. So it's Holly Hill Films. You said uh, you updated all your social media after that live. Awesome. And let me know in the chat, guys, or in the comments below if you're watching the replay. Um, if you joined me for those other two lives, if you didn't, I think she put them all in here, so you'll be able to go look at them. All right. <laughs> okay. Tori says, all of those are famous actors, it seems. Any accounts of lesser known actors that are doing it right? Actually, Ella Grace on there is not a fame, well, not famous yet. She will be famous very soon. Um, but um, that would be a great person. Look up Sherry Mendez. She's doing a really great job, um, actress. Um, but all of them, it doesn't matter that they're famous because guess what? Most people on that list are doing the Fab Four. They are showing us a little bit of them, showing the actor's life. Okay. And if I put them there, it meant they're doing a really good job. So, and some of them might be my clients too. <laughs> but that's why they're doing a good job. Awesome. I think somebody, I'm just going to answer uh, like one more question because we're getting near the hour mark. Um, I just saw where, where did it go? Um, somebody is asking about a business account. Um, actually, I answered that in the last live. Go watch the Instagram one or just go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Heidi Dean and look up. I have a video that's should you have a business account or a regular account as an actor. Okay. So we covered a lot. Make sure you guys, please, 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 please do the work, okay? Don't just get these post ideas, okay? And that Apparently the link is now working. Yay, it's in the description, guys. Don't just get these post ideas and start posting without answering the questions, without figuring out what your nanyas are, 
They all need to come from you. You need to find out who you are and start doing it on purpose, posting about it on purpose, and you can use these, okay? They have to come together, all right? Let me know if that makes sense. Thank you so much for joining me today. This was awesome, awesome. Um, and hopefully I'll be back. <laughs> I'm living here on this channel. Um, so um, I will see you guys very soon. Make sure you get your post ideas, you do the work, and I will see you guys um, across social media, marketingforactors.com, marketing for actors. And until then, I'll see you on social. Bye. Bye, guys.